Hi there and welcome to today's tutorial on shaping the Earth's atmosphere and in today's tutorial we're going to look at temperature and air pressure. Uh, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. So we're going to look at temperature and pressure but first of all we're going to look at temperature and the sun provides the heat for our planet Earth. However, uh, the sun's heat is not evenly spread out because of the shape of our Earth and because of latitude. Just to recap what latitude is, latitude refers to the distance uh, north or south of the equator. So though usually the further you are north of the equator or the further you are south of the equator, the colder it does get. And the spherical shape is, is just the, 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 the shape of the Earth. So we've looked at, at latitude, so it's the distance north and south of the equator. And usually the further you go away, the colder it is. Uh, the spherical shape of the Earth. This is um, like at the equator. The rays from the sun shine directly onto the Earth. And because the sun's rays have the shortest distance to go, it's going to produce mo the most amount of heat. So on the equator, it's going to be much, much warmer. As you go further away, the, rays, the sun's rays have much uh, further distance to travel. Therefore it's going to be colder the further you go north and south of the equator. So hopefully this picture might explain um, a little bit better, uh, it's more visual. So here the distance that the sun's rays have to travel is the shortest so along this line the equator it's going to be, it's going to be the most amount of heat generated so it's going to be the warmest and if you go further up to the top these lines which the, uh, the, the rays of sunshine have to travel are much longer therefore it's not going to be as strong so that the heat generated is not going to be as powerful so it's not going to be as warm the further you go north and it's the same as when you go south these sun's rays are further to travel so that is why it's colder the further you move away from the equator okay so we're going to look at pressure now um, the atmosphere has uh, a number of uh, different gases and these gases don't float away because into space because they're forced down by gravity but the air has a weight and this weight um, is called pressure and we measure pressure in millibars and we've looked at this um, in other tutorials before we've looked at low pressure and high pressure so there's two types of pressures that you can have you can have low pressure and you can have high pressure so we know from other tutorials that low pressure is when the air is heated and expands and it rises into the atmosphere and we are left with an area of low pressure. High pressure is when cool air starts to descend down on the earth and this fo forms high pressure. Another important thing that you must know is that winds always blow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. So they always go from high pressure to areas of low pressure. Okay, so that's really, really important that you know that. So the winds always blow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. So, the next thing we need to know is that in the Earth, we have seven zones of pressure. So three of those zones are low pressure and four zones of high pressure. I'm going to show you this now in uh, a diagram. Okay, so this is um, a picture of the Earth. And like we said, we've got seven zones. I'm going to show you the seven zones now. I'm going to show you the three low pressure and the four high pressure zones that we have. So the seven zones are here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So those are the seven zones. But I'm going to show you which ones are the high pressure and which ones are the low pressure. So the high pressure. I'll do in red, okay, so the high pressure we'll do in red, and for the low pressure I'll leave in orange. So high pressure, this one here is high pressure, this one here is high pressure, this one here is high pressure, and this one here is high pressure. So we've got four high pressure and three low pressure. So I'm going to explain why we've got high pressure and low pressure in different areas okay so we start off with the first one is along the equator and along the equator there's low pressure because of the great heat that we get from the sun's rays then the warm air starts to rise up and as the warm air rises up 
it starts to drift towards the 30 degrees north and it starts uh, to drift towards the 30 degrees south. At this latitude the air is colder so it cools when it moves up and what happens then is we get an area of high pressure here and an area of high pressure here. The air then drifts back down towards the equator because the wind blows from high pressure to low pressure. We found out that winds blow from high pressure to low pressure. So as the air moves up towards high pressure, it then comes back down and drifts towards low pressure because winds blow from areas of high pressure to areas of low, of low pressure. And that is why we get low pressure and then high pressure. And the same thing happens uh, down here you have low pressure and you get high pressure here. So, now we're going to look at uh, the six major wind systems. So we looked over here at the seven zones of pressure. We looked at those three areas of low pressure and those four areas of high pressure. Now we're going to look at the six major wind systems, okay? And I'm just going to show you where they are. Okay, so the first one is here. The second one is here. The third one is here. The fourth one is here. The fifth one is here. And the sixth one is there. So... What you can see is that you've got three in the northern hemisphere and you have three in this the southern hemisphere, okay? So you've got one, two, three, and you have one, two, three. So that makes up six major wind systems. And in each of these wind systems, the winds blow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. So from high pressure to low pressure, from high pressure to low pressure, 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 and high pressure to low pressure. The names of the three of the three in the northern hemisphere. The first one is called the northeast polar winds or the polar easterlies. The second one is called the prevailing westerlies. And the third one is called the Northeast Trade Winds. In the Southern Hemisphere, we have the Southeast Trade Winds. We have the prevailing Westerlies. And we have the Polar Easterlies. One thing to notice is, in the Northern Hemisphere, all the winds are deflected to the right-hand side. And in the Southern Hemisphere, all the, things are def all the winds are uh, deflected to the left-hand side. Okay, and this is why in the northern hemisphere, when you flush uh, the toilet or when you when you turn on the sink, the water is deflected from left to right, and this is the opposite in the southern hemisphere. When you turn on this the sink or flush the toilet, the water will go around in a circle, but it'll go around in the opposite direction. It will go around from right to left, and this is because of uh, it's called the Coriolis effect. And that's because the winds are deflected uh, to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the uh, southern hemisphere. One thing to notice is you can see the prevailing westerlies and the prevailing westerlies up here. What the prevailing wind is, is the name given to the most frequent wind that blows in that area. So in Ireland, the prevailing wind co comes um, from the prevailing westerlies. And sometimes we say um, the prevailing southwesterlies. So I've just wrote out here what prevailing winds are. So the most frequent wind that blows in that area, just so you know. And in Ireland, we say that the prevailing wind comes from the southwesterly, or sometimes we say the prevailing westerlies. And just a final reminder, in the northern hemisphere, winds are deflected to the right, and in the southern hemisphere, winds are deflected to the left. Okay, so that's it for today's tutorial on temperature and air pressure. Uh, air pressure can be something that students find uh, tricky so I hope this tutorial was of, of much help. If it was helpful and you did find it useful and you found it like it actually did help you can you please 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 um, leave me some feedback on the video below. below. I would really appreciate if you could leave me some feedback um, below in the comments on uh, YouTube um, and if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel can you please do so after this video. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram for all the latest news and uh, all the you get the updates for all the latest videos that I upload, and um, when I when I do post them, thanks guys.